Hi everyone, today I'm in my tea shop in Poor City and it's raining outside so I wanted to take this moment to try some different teas and do a side-by-side -side tasting and so my picking for today is the Jingmai Gulan and the Jingmai Single Trees these are two cakes that we've sold, that we've produced uh, last spring and which are still available at the time of uh, this uh, video and I think it's quite relevant to to have a side-by-side -side tasting with them because they come from roughly the same tea gardens now the Gulan is a blend of maybe six different tea gardens and if I remember correctly we included two or three different gardens in the single trees but what's the main difference it's the age of the 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 size of the tea trees you could say let's not talk about the age of the tea trees anyway. It's the size of the tea trees. So in the Gulan, you have um, a mixed picking. So it means the small and medium, um, medium trees of the ancient tea gardens. And the biggest trees, they are, um, they are picked separately and they are pressed into the single tree cake. So I have those uh, two teas ready, eight grams per, um, that's 100 millimeter, I guess, my, my Gaiwan. I use very simple material, simple tea wear today. Actually, uh, when, when it comes to doing more analytical tastings, I prefer to use those uh, very simple um, glass uh, cups because I think they, they just give a better, um, a better fragrance. I feel like there's a more accurate fragrance. So, Let's start with the rinse. And so, what we define as big trees, um, worthy of being included in the single tree cake, is the trees that you have to climb onto in order to pick the leaves. So all the trees that uh, you don't need to climb to pick the trees, Basically, they are processed in the, they, they are put in, into the, the Gulan cake. Now, there, there might be a couple of big trees in this Gulan as well, because the farmers will not always systematically choose to do a separate picking, a single tree picking. But nowadays, I think most farmers do, especially if they have very big trees in their gardens. And so, it's interesting because in, in in each tea mountain, people have different names for the teas, uh, for the qualities of teas. So, for example, if you go to Jingmai and ask for the Gushu, well, the Gushu will be what's in the Gulan. It means a mixed picking, so mostly, uh, mostly medium trees and some small trees and maybe a few big trees. And you have to ask for Danzhu for the single trees in order to get the tea from uh, the big trees only. And this would be different if you went to Iwu, for example. Uh, what's in the Gulan, they would, they would call it Xiaoshu, small trees. And this one, they would call it Gushu, so they would call it like uh, ancient trees. So let's just preheat our cup. And first we can check for the, the clarity of the soup. So I think it's fine. There, there shouldn't be a, any... It shouldn't be much concern unless you have uh, very poorly stored teas or um, maybe teas that got moldy and in that case the, the soup might, uh, might be muddy. But, um, well, wh when we've just pr produced the tea, you can have some slightly troubled uh, soup and it's because of excessive uh, steaming during the, the wok processing. But usually this, uh, this turbidity should uh, subside after, after a couple of months or usually after pressing because when you press, you do, uh, well, you do an extra steaming and I guess it's the drying, the drying then with uh, about 50, 50 degrees Celsius in that hot room, the drying should make the soup clearer. So, but it's always cool to check. And of course you want to check the Beidixiang, the, the fragrance 
at the bottom of the leaves uh, of the, the picture. And from now I, I can see that this one has more of that um, orchid fragrance, that Lan Hua Xiang, that makes uh, Jing Mai famous. This one, the single trees seems more uh, closed, more introverted, I could say. So the goal of the first brew will be mainly, I think, to, to, clean, to clean our mouth. You usually don't expect too much from the first brew, especially if the tea was uh, softly rolled. Mm, what you get in the first brews will depend a lot on the, on the rolling parameters. If you roll hard, you'll get a lot of stuff coming out in the, in the first brew. And it also depends, of course, on your brewing time. But those, um, those leaves from the ancient tea gardens, since they are naturally quite powerful, they have a lot to deliver, I prefer to give a soft roll so that uh, it's not overwhelming in the first brews and uh, you have that uh, endurance that's usually, that people like to associate with uh, tea from ancient tea gardens. So here we, we could consider the terroir is the same and we're going to, uh, the only parameter that's different here is the, the size of the tea trees. Okay, so that's what we're going to study today. Okay, so these, these teas have aged for, uh, well, for six months. In, um, in Puer City, in our tea shop. So usually when you smell the leaves at the first, just after the rinse or at the first brew like this, you'll mainly uh, test the, the storage quality, I would say. And for some very fragrant leaves, you can also get some uh, interesting fragrances. Here, I think we have very toned down there is some fragrance, but it's not uh, very expressive. It has complexity, but it's not explosive like you would find in certain tea. And this is mostly, mainly due to the, the, processing, the processing modalities. So, well, usually we like to process tea in which the, the fragrance is understated and uh, will appear more in the throat, in the back of the mouth, uh, rather than in the nose. So. I think you shouldn't expect too much fragrance in the nose from our teas. So we've got um, a very direct uh, bitterness, I would say a medium bitterness, <coughs> which is um, which immediately vanishes, well, you could say after one or two seconds, it vanishes and it really coats the mouth into sweetness. Mm -hmm. And here I feel we have quite the same thing, but you can feel that the, that process of uh, converting the bitterness into sweetness and astringency uh, takes a bit longer and it has more impact on the gums. So at a first cup like this, a first sip, I would think that this tea seems to have more power, the, the tea from the single trees. It seems to be a more intense experience. You can really uh, feel the soup traveling through the mouth and in the throat. That's quite interesting. So this one is not as intense, but I think there are some more interesting dynamics. Hmm. I just feel generally a richer aroma, but that kind of aroma that, that's in the mouth. 
Okay, let, let's go directly to the to the second brew. Uh, so the the second brew, we we said the first brew is just to clean our mouth, and from the second brew on, you can start really judging the tea. I think. I see drinking tea just like watching a movie. You know, you have the the introduction and uh, some things are introduced like the characters and uh, then as the session progresses you should have some kind of development in in the story so uh, that's how I like to think of the the tea session and so to me uh, an interesting tea should have that dynamics it should uh, tell you a story through the session So I guess we can expect even more intensity now. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't have that uh, little stuff to pick, so it's super hot, that brass stuff. I'm just trying this uh, Tetsubin. It's not the most convenient way of uh, brewing water, but I think it adds an interesting aesthetic touch and now I'm going to take this thing okay okay so now we can see our leaves are opening up and to control the brewing time it's really you can see when you look that kind of leaves which are half opened that's when you should use very short steeping times because as the you know, you can think of it as a sponge that's getting soaked with water progressively. And during this time, the, that's when all of the, the tea stuff will be released, most of it. So use very short steepings at this time. Interestingly, I, I can smell a slightly smoky fragrance in both of the teas so it might be um, it might be due to well to the fact that we we, we cook the tea with uh, with wood we fire with wood and so there will always be maybe a bit of smoke that that can come maybe in in the environment or something or maybe it's just uh, psychological I don't know but when you have like a, a machine processed tea or a tea which hasn't been uh, cooked with uh, firewood, you get a more, you get a cleaner, you get a cleaner taste. But I tend to prefer the, just a, a tiny little bit of smoke. It gives some kind of uh, artisanal, <laughs> artisanal style to the, to the tea. You could say it's a bit la like the peat in the whiskey. Uh, it's good to always have a little bit of it. So again, not much to, not much to to smell uh, if you just smell the soup. Really, if you want to have the smell, it's either the the bottom of the pitcher, the bottom of the cup, uh, but most importantly, inside the mouth through ritual faction. And if I do the retrofaction faction now, I, I, I already get uh, pretty good fragrances from the, the past, the, from the first brew. Mm, when you do the side by side, you can clearly uh, feel that this one is more intense. It really has more punch, as if the um, you know the soup penetrated the the gums, you know, and the and the mouth skin uh, all around, like it penetrates a bit deeper than this one. But this one has a pleasant, a kind of. It has some kind of sourness, but it's not sourness. 
it's a kind of playful bitterness that um, I don't know it feels like it's moving around the bitterness and it has that kind of bite that you can relate to sourness but it's not a sourness like you'd have in black tea for example and we get a pretty strong bitterness now as you as you've seen i, I like to brew my teas uh, very strong um, my friends always remind me of that when i brew the tea for them mm. but when trying the tea i like to brew strong because i want to know what the tea has to has to give and sometimes you can you can hide not so good teas behind a weak brew Hmm. Yeah, this one, the, the mouthfeel is lighter, but it's not, um, it's not necessarily um, uh, worse than this one. Well, hmm. I would say if you're a seasoned drinker, I think most of the seasoned drinkers would prefer this one because it, it clearly has more intensity. But this one, it has something that the single trees doesn't have. I would say it has maybe more aromatic complexity and that kind of playful bitterness. While in this one, oh, and this one, well, to me it feels a bit more astringent. Now, it's hard to get the astringency in a side-by-side -side because astringency takes some time to build up. Um, but this one, I find it more... What, more single-minded, something like that. that. There's a complexity in the Gulan that the single trees doesn't have. But this one uh, has a more, um, well, it's more intense overall. You know, overall, you can feel there's more, more power. And so compared to the first brew, now we're increasing in uh, intensity for both. I'm not going to finish those brews, otherwise I'll be tea drunk before the end of the session. Oh, it wasn't turned on, maybe I, I will just heat it up just a bit. And... Mm. Mm. Yeah, this one you can feel it goes very deep in the throat actually. This one is not as deep, but I would say the experience in the mouth is superior to, to the single trees in the Gulan. So maybe um, a possibility is just that small trees actually give better fragrance. And I feel I've experienced this uh, many times. So I wouldn't say that the big trees are better than the small trees on all aspects. They are, they are better on most aspects that uh, uh, a seasoned poor tea drinker will find uh, worthy. For example, the, the huigan, the viscosity, um, the active mouthfeel really, that uh, feel of penetrating the gums and stuff. But I would say the, um, there's still something that, that's likable really in the in the smaller trees and that you get less of in the big trees and that would be maybe uh, slightly higher pitch fragrances or maybe more demonstrative fragrances and that kind of bitterness sourness that that bites that bites the size of the mouth it it's playful ah, I like that hmm. And sometimes you, you'll find out strange things like objectively one tea will be better than another but during daily sessions you'll be more inclined to pick that what tea that, that tea which is not as good as the best tea. And I don't know why it's some, somehow uh, related to the subconscious. 
You know, just like when you're in a, in a supermarket just uh, choosing your toilet paper and you have lots of toilet paper and then you just pick one. You don't know why, but I guess the marketing guys who designed the, the toilet paper know why. Well, I guess they are supposed to compete in the toilet paper market. And, well, you could say that when you have your poor tea cakes in your closet, it's quite the same. You have lots of choices and you'll end up picking one and you don't really know why you pick it. Uh, but it shows that that's good tea for you. So if you want to, to see what, what's the best tea for you, just look at your tea closet, closets and, and look at the, the teas you've had the most. And you'll find out it's not necessarily the most expensive tea or not the ones that you, you'd say taste the best. So let, let's do the Bei Di Xiang another time. Hmm. So I'm sorry, I'm not going to give you uh, uh, a long list of, uh, of fragrance, uh, of uh, aroma, uh, of aroma description because I'm not really good at it and I think I, I just don't like doing that, you know, uh, saying it, it tastes like, like prune and then some uh, raw peach and everything. This one has a more intense fragrance, the Gulan. It's very Jing Mai-ish and at this point, so it, it, it was made about six months ago and it still has that freshness and a bit of that, a bit of that wok, wok fragrance. So it reminds me of the, of making the tea. I had the chance to, to make tea a couple of days ago, so I'm quite happy because now it's, it's the end and we won't have tea before mid-March probably. So at this point you can, I can feel that the Hui Gan comes here. It's not the most powerful Hui Gan. If you want the most powerful Hui Gan, I would recommend more Lao Manua tea or, you know, Pasha or Hukai, Lao Ban Zhang. Uh, to me, that's where you get the most powerful Hui Gan. Um, you can have very good Hui Gan in the Yiwu tea as well. But the characteristic of the, of the Jingmai Hui Gan is it, it comes quickly. So Jingmai is a very straightforward tea, I would say. Mm, it delivers a lot of things mm, in the first brews. While if you look at, for example, Lao Mano or uh, Eastern Yiwu, it's more of a build-up uh, and you have to experience the, the whole session. Even in the best teas from uh, like Kwafong Jai area in the east of Yiwu, sometimes they don't taste anything special when you have one cup but it's over the full session that you will get higher and higher and that Hui Gan deeper and deeper and just uh, have your mind kind of flying away. Jing Mai is not that kind of tea. It's really, yeah, a more straightforward, more direct tea. So what I like in the Gulan is that so far each brew has been different and now we, we have a different set of aromas. It was more floral in the beginning and now it's more herbaceous, a bit like hay. So many people say that in Jing Mai, astringency is pretty strong, and it's true even in the even in, in the in the Gushu actually, in, even in the tea from ancient tea gardens. But 
One of the reasons might be because there aren't that many big trees in Jingmai, and that's why we call them Danzu and we press them, um, we, we press them separately from the more standard Gushu. So there are really two factors at play here. One uh, in the quality. One is the age of the tree, and the second one is the environment. And so, to me, the, the fact that it comes from the uh, from the ancient tea gardens, it, it's a very it's a fairly different environment here from the the natural tea gardens we have, because that forest has been planted with tea for a long, long time. So you can imagine that uh, some nutrients specific to to the tea. Uh, are maybe depleted in the um, in the soil of the ancient tea gardens. I think growing the same plant for a long time in a in a given plot it will deplete some nutrients. So of course you 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 might get some fertilization over the time for the, the cows grazing outside and 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 staying in uh, in the ancient tea gardens. But nowadays there, there's really not any kind of fertilization allowed in the ancient tea gardens and um, even even if you have some fertilization uh, the nature of the crop you, you plant will deplete you, you will have some uh, imbalances in nutrients or some just different compositions so that's why in agriculture usually we like to do crop rotation it allows uh, one plant to use the nutrients that another doesn't. Um, common association, for example, uh, you're gonna grow a cereal, for example, wheat, and then you're gonna you're gonna plant some uh, some peas, some kind of peas, and then maybe some sunflowers. You know, so usually your rotation works on three different plants, and uh, and you can repeat it maybe every year or well, depending on how long you grow your crops. But it's not the case for the tea, since it's a permanent uh, plantation. So you can imagine that if you grow tea for a thousand years on a given plot, it will influence the soil composition. And I think it will lead to uh, differences in taste. Now in the ancient tea gardens compared to the natural tea gardens, well, I would say you have more biodiversity because the ancient tea gardens is a, it's a true forest. It's a managed forest, of course, because people plant trees in, inside, but you have very big trees, uh, which, uh, which, which give, give uh, quite a heavy shade on those um, tea trees. And you have a much richer ecosystem than in the natural tea gardens. You also have usually a, an interesting litter since you have big trees. You have lots of leaves falling on the ground and making so a litter that's a, a cover of the ground with dead leaves and those dead leaves will uh, decompose and um, it will create niches for lots of species, especially all those uh, little animals that we rarely care about but which actually um, they add up and they can do a lot of work in the soil and have an influence on the eventually on the physiology of the plant. In the natural tea gardens we only we, we have I think they planted five different kinds of shade trees but of course they are they're not as tall as the as what you have in the ancient tea gardens. If you're curious about this just check uh, Jingmai on Google Earth and you'll see clearly the difference between the, the ancient tea gardens, which looks like a, like a half-cleared forest, like a sparsely uh, a sparse forest, and the natural tea gardens, which have trees but look more like teas are planted in rows, look more like mm, conventional plantations from above. Mm. Yeah, this one has stronger bitterness. Since the bitterness is stronger, it takes a bit more time uh, to, to vanish. And it still delivers 
quite a, a good bit of astringency in my opinion. And you, yeah, you can really feel the tea like this. And you see when you're comparing tea, well, uh, those are pretty high quality tea, I would say. Now we could also do a side by side with the, the Gulan versus the Miyun, so we'd compare uh, medium sized trees and smaller trees from the ancient tea gardens. This is the small trees uh, from the natural tea gardens, and then we would. So we. The variable we would compare is not the age of the trees so much as the environment, and that can be interesting. So I can hear that they have started working again. Um, our, uh, our area is still in construction and it's going to be quite noisy. So I think I'm going to have to leave it here. Mm. So you could say these two teas, you can push them above 10 brews. Uh, I've only done three brews, three, three brews of them. But I think it's sufficient to see... Um, where they are going. Now I think I'm gonna finish them on my own. Um, it's clear that this one, yeah, this one is more intense and I guess in a blind tasting, a lot of people would uh, acknowledge the, the higher, yeah, the higher power in this one. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I think, well, if you can, if you can afford to, to drink some tea from ancient tea gardens on a, on a daily basis, I think I would prefer this one. And often I find myself going for this one. Um, well, maybe because I know I have lots of it, so uh, I'm not as worried as uh, finishing it up as the, the single trees. But also because mm, it's still a very complex experience uh, in absolute terms compared to the average poor tea. And um, sometimes you don't want the most intense tea either. So, yeah, that, that's the tea I find myself going for a lot when I want to have Jing Mai tea. If you look at the leaves, they look pretty similar, but you can see darker shades of green, I think, on the, on the single trees. Although, yeah, it might just be due to a randomness. I would say it's very hard to make the difference from the leaves. Yeah, so on average, they tend to be slightly thicker, the, the leaves from the, the ancient tea gardens. But um, it's still very hard to judge if you, if you only see one of them. So yeah, that's about it for today. Uh, feel free to, to share your different experiences with the, well with those teas or maybe if you've had some uh, side by side tastings of uh, big trees this is small trees um, this year we, we've um, we've featured quite a lot of those uh, those uh, two two qualities of cakes for example we had the laumana in, in small trees and big trees we had the, the pasha and maybe another one but I really encourage you to maybe buy two samples, you know, of uh, one small and one big. Oh yeah, we had the one from Laos as well. And um, yeah, that's part of the exploration of poverty because many people uh, say a lot about the age of the trees and you can experience for yourself through these teas. Okay, so thank you for watching and see you later. Bye bye.